interested in opting out of the madcap 1990s and living in a firm, disciplined 1950s world of role play and grades of punishment. Welcome to the show, Miss Martindale, a governess of Aristasia. Miss Martindale, what is Aristasia and when did it get set up? Well, Aristasia is a, a country that we've created in order to have a place to live completely apart from the uh, hideousness of the pit, which is what we call the modern world, everything except us. <laughs> That's grand, it's wonderful. Who comes to Aristasia? Um, well, we're only open to girls, and girls come for many different reasons. Um, the main reason uh, at this stage of our history is an interest in corporal punishment. Is, is there sexual satisfaction in, in the girls being spanked? Uh, there's no sexual activity of any kind in Aristasia, not for inhabitants or visitors. Um, it's very much a world of uh, sensuality as it arises. We don't seek sensuality overtly any more well, than we would sexuality because that's just right out of the window in our world. Um, but it is, it is a world of intense aesthetic and emotional experiences, and all girls are able to experience uh, emotions that they may never have felt, such as innocence and wonder and complete trust in an adult. Um, grown girls come, and because they feel younger, everyone has younger personalities, including me, but I have grown girls, and they sit on my lap, you know, they say, oh, Miss Martin, can I have a cuddle? I say, come on, darling. And it's very much supplying uh, motherliness that they've never had, warmth of friendship that many girls have never had, because the modern world is so uh, friendless and empty for many girls, even very successful girls in the pit. I'm not talking about little waifs and strays. And um, as a governess, that you have to punish these girls. So considering that it, it is a, a home of safeness and um, feminine um, warmth, what do they have to do to get punished? Um, well, there are two main strands of punishment. There's quite uh, the simple everyday punishment if fine training a maid in the kitchen. Then I use something handy like this. Quick slap on the hand, you know, if she's broken something, forgotten to say very good, madam, and so on, or maybe bending over if it's a bit more serious. Something little like this, it's easy to keep in the kitchen dresser drawer. How would you get it, you know, when there's something you need to punish? Uh, whereas in school uh, afternoons, uh, you, use, you might use something like this. It may not look very formidable, but it is. It's quite thick. It's very it's stiff. Terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> and then the canes, you know, are reserved for more serious punishment and are often only given to uh, inhabitants if there's a serious offence. Do people dress up and is there role playing going on in the, in the house? Well, we call it life theatre because it's not going from one stark game to another the way when people in the pit feel, well, I've got my real life where I go to work, you know, and then I play these games on the side. For us, it is everything. Um, when we work on the book, say, um, one of the girls would take on the role of office, office supervisor and would go and uh, give discipline if the office was untidy or if the work wasn't done. And so uh, positions of authority and uh, regulating behaviour just are threaded through everyday life. This sounds like my school life. It sounds like <laughs> the school I went to. Well, I was going to say, I'm probably the only one here who's old enough to remember the 50s. And I do not remember it as a time of great safety and beauty and everything. I think it was cold, the food was diabolical. You know, everything about the 50s, I think, was drab and beastly. I have no wish to return to it whatsoever. I can't imagine it. But when I think of the 50s, I think of Enid Blyton, and, the, and there is that kind of perfection of the yeah. world in and her innocence, writing. I yes. Well, innocence. I think a very important point is it's, not his, it's nothing historical. Mm. Uh, we're not trying to recreate anything that happened in the past. We think the last third of civilization collapsed in the 1960s. So we hold ourselves free to create a new miniature civilization from the best of everything. And so we, we borrow anything and everything that we think represents stylishness and graciousness and beauty, and we create our miniature world with it. Are you completely self-contained financially? We are. I mean, obviously, we have to sell things to people in the pit, but we run, we run two businesses. We run the uh, Wildfire Club where we sell 
uh, books such as this one, Dart Females Disciplining Females, and a lot more besides, like the philosophy, and we also sell by mail order the implements I've been showing you here. And all the work that we do with girls, no matter how much time it takes up, we don't charge a penny ever. Um, the businesses are there to maintain the whole setup and finance it, and any girl that wants to come, uh, whether she wants to come once a month or three times a week or wants to come and live there, well, uh, there's, no, there's no charge. I would have thought, you know, all us lot from the void really need our role playing. I mean, it's mm. an important aspect of life, isn't it? Well, uh, yes, and I mean, I think lots of people do have role play within, within their relationships and things. But, I mean, I'm interested, uh, you know, who comes to you? Who actually, because the, especially the spanking thing, I mean, we, we've really seen on this program quite often, this is a very male thing, you know, lots of men like sort of physical discipline and everything. Who, you know, who are these women that hanker after that? And all the girls that come to us, whether they're conscious of this when they come, are aware, once we've talked to them, that they protect their femininity under a masculinized appearance, even if they're wearing dresses, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, you've got to have a, a hard rubber layer to hold everyone at bay. And as soon as they come into the safety and warmth of Anastasia, they, they feel protected, they can feel it's the sanctuary from their everyday world. And they begin to express uh, a, a gentler femininity. I mean, I help them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I help them along the way. It doesn't happen just like magic. But, but, you, but you see them open up and be able to, experience, uh, to, to express sensitive feelings that they would be laughed at for in, in the pit. Well, I want to know, who spanks you when you're out of order? Well, I have a mistress who isn't in the house with me, who I see at various points during the year. Uh, but if I'm in, and I do think, I just can't express this clearly enough, that it's nothing like what you call role play, because you're consciously playing it as a game. And this is a, a thread that goes in and out of life all the time. It's a way um, of life for you. Oh, yes, and for, all, for the girls who are inhabitants. I mean, I, I left... Um, three girls in the house today when I went out. One's the maid, and the other girls are higher than her most of the time, and they're supposed to do office work. But the girl who is the maid also has a grown-up personality who's very uh, good disciplinarian, and uh, although she's terribly what we call blonde the rest of the time, very sort of submissive the rest of the time, and she's giving the other girls a detention while I'm out in the school room, just for half an hour. And... Um, th this is not. This isn't a game. This is life. real life. It has completely different you, atmosphere. You must have discovered that there's types of women in the world. What types are there? Well, we divide uh, the feminine sex into two sexes in our state. They wouldn't take no notice of men at all. And um, that they are blondes and brunettes. Blondes are the sort of fluffy side of femininity, uh, a yielding side, and a a gentle side that likes to be protected by the brunette. Like I, I'm obviously a brunette, you know, sort of capable and practical and organising. Even though you're a chaste household, is it a lesbian household? Um, well, how, I suspect it's lesbian in the sense of the original inhabitants of Lesbos, but not what it's come to mean in the pit. And so if a brunette prefect sort of pays a bit of attention to a blonde schoolgirl who would be feeling younger than her, you know, the blonde schoolgirl, whether it's a, a pinch or a, or a bit of a smack or a kiss, would go, oh, that big girl's paying me attention. So um, to, the, to that extent, it's, I suppose it's more like when you have crushes on girls at school, mm. that e even though uh, the, the girls involved are of sort of 20 uh, up to my age, although the girls that come are usually 20s and 30s, they don't usually get girls my age. Do you know if any of the girls that come to you have husbands or boyfriends in the outside world, or is it like leave that behind? Well, it, mostly girls leave that behind, but um, I, and I don't ask questions. A girl comes and she is what she is in Anastasia, but through little bits and pieces you tend to pick up. And we have a mixture of girls who would see themselves as heterosexual in the pit and girls who see themselves as lesbian in the pit. But everyone fits together, and ev everyone becomes blonde and brunette, and because there's no uh, sexual atmosphere, uh, those things become irrelevant, and girls just cope with this without, any, without thinking about those labels. Well, Miss Martindale, thank you for coming on the show, and um, I'm very glad Christine behaved herself, because it would be awful to have to <laughs> spank her in front of everybody. <laughs>